So Ruxu, which we've reviewed in the past, and they had some pretty bad batteries, they have a new server rack battery, but it looks pretty good. Like even the case is not a copy and paste like everyone else. They have their own design. And even up close, this looks better than an EG4 or an SOK. I love this. Even the paint and how it's cut, it looks incredible. And it's nice to see a new battery in this space because I'm getting pretty bored of these now. Look at that. This is really nice. I cannot believe that Ruxu built this. If you watch my older videos, check out their older batteries. This is on a completely different level. I don't see a single issue here. Everything is even torqued and marked. Oh, this is different. Check this out. So typically you'll have only one resistor for the pre-charge resistor circuit, but this one has four massive ones. Everything else looks good. The crimps are fantastic. All of the connectors are glued in place. Yeah, it looks fantastic. There's nothing bad here. Next, the balance cable is welded to the terminals. It looks perfect. This is how you're supposed to do it. This is better than a screw terminal or a solder joint or some other silly configuration that we've seen on this channel in the past. This looks fantastic. Now in this battery, we have two cell packs and these are 8S configuration and they're held together with this bus bar. And this bus bar and the bus bars between the terminals have a little lump here. And that's smart to do so if there's expansion and contraction at different temperatures and different states of charge, it will allow for it without stressing the terminal itself or the cell down below. Also, you'll notice that the cell holders are very similar to an EG4 with this green strap. These are made for these cells and this green strap holds everything together. These are new match cells, so there shouldn't be that much expansion and contraction, but over time there will be, and it's nice to have these bumps on the bus bars, but that's an industry standard. Pretty much everybody uses that, so that's not special. Also, these are welded, so these are not serviceable. Also, they're threaded. That's interesting, I did not notice that. So even though they're welded, you can still swap it out for another balance lead or a different BMS altogether, if that's what you wanna do. And this is a metal bracket for the modules. These batteries keep getting better every six months. This is fantastic. Now the first big difference of this versus other server racks is this is designed to be used in a server rack only. It does not have a screw terminal. So that means you have to use their connectors and their cables. And you can buy these from other suppliers, but you have to use these unlike the ring terminals. Ring terminals, you can go to Walmart, get some lugs and connect it to an SOK battery or an EG4, but not with these. You have to use these connectors. And previously we had a bad time with AO Lithium's connectors and I did not like those. They had current sharing issues and these were undersized. The cable inside is not that big. But on these, these are massive. These are four gauge and when used with the server rack, it actually works really well. But I would never use the AO Lithium. Even though they look the same, it's a completely different configuration because with this one, the Ruxu is using a bus bar with these connectors and I'll show you that in a second. Now we're going to put this battery into my system and I want to show you how it works. Woo! I did not see those conductors. They were totally in the way. You got marked up pretty bad. It'll be fine. So we're going to turn off the other battery so that doesn't happen again. I didn't think it would hit, but it did. At least we got it on film. That was cool. <laughs> that scared me. I actually blew a T-Class fuse, which I've never actually done before, but that's why we use them. Would have been a very big incident if it didn't blow. I also tested these lugs and they're fine. Now these connect the battery to the bus bar on the side of the server rack and it gives you these super long heavy duty screws. These are much nicer than the EG4 ones. Um, the SOK ones are large, but they don't have a dedicated bus bar. So this configuration is actually my favorite. And it looks so nice. I mean, check this out. If you wanna remove a battery, 
you just wiggle this off, disconnect this, and slide it out. And these can handle a lot more current than AO lithium. And they're using a dedicated bus bar that's actually very thick. It's thicker than the EG4 one, and there's larger screw terminals for the connections. Now you wanna connect it to the bus bar first and the battery second, because this connector can't short out on anything. If you connect it to the battery first and that thing's on, you could accidentally cause a short circuit like I just did and then connect it to the battery. Now just add the communication ports and you'll notice that these are vertical. Most server racks, they're horizontal. And this is nice because this is more intuitive. The top port connects to the bottom of this one and the top connects to the bottom of this one. So you can't really screw it up. Now this cable connects to my 18K by EG4. And from day one, I did not change any settings. I did set the DIN switches for the address code. So each battery is different so they can all communicate. But all I did was plug this into the top battery and everything worked perfectly. So first we need to turn them on. So move this out of the way and then flip the on switch. And now let's go over to the 18K and see if it's communicating. And it just updated. So we show the state of charge. Now go over here to battery and then it shows everything about these batteries. So if your settings work with the EG4 batteries, they'll work with the Ruxu batteries. You don't have to change anything. You just plug it right in and everything works. Now the big question is, should you actually buy this battery? How does it compare to the other server rack options on the market? Now the main competitor for the Ruxu is going to be the EG4 budget battery and not the SOK budget because the SOK budget battery does not have communication and it does not have a state of charge indicator light and all of these other lights. It's a bare bones battery. And if you're gonna use it with the 18K, most people are gonna either go with the EG4 budget battery or the Ruxu because they both work seamlessly with the 18K. You just plug it in and there you go, you have communication. But these batteries are different. The Ruxu does not have a circuit breaker. The EG4 budget one does have a dedicated DC rated circuit breaker. Next, Signature Solar has been around for a long time and they offer warranty and support. Ruxu does as well, but they're not US based. They're Chinese based. So I have no idea what you're gonna get or if they're gonna shut down tomorrow. Ruxu has been around for a long time and I actually reviewed their batteries like four years ago. These are not the same types of batteries and I feel like they're not the same company anymore. Their new products are on a totally different level. Even the other batteries that they sell are the same relabeled batteries that RoyPow uses or those golf cart batteries that we installed a couple months ago. So I think they should have given themselves a different name because the old Ruxu batteries I was not a fan of, but everything that they're selling now is top notch quality. But will you get a warranty and support? I have no idea. I have no clue. I need to test it. We all need to. Um, if you're curious about Ruxu, give them a call and ask them what they're selling. Ask about their products. See if they know what they're talking about. Now, if you have a problem with an EG4 or an SOK, you can get a new one. The warranties are really good. But with Ruxu, I have no idea and only time will tell. And these batteries were actually reviewed first by Lithium Solar. He has a fantastic YouTube channel that's very similar to mine. He does battery teardowns and reviews so check out his channel if you want to learn more so this comment by high tech lab and that's dexter from current connected he sells the sok batteries he made this list he said no charge current limiter on the bms i don't think that's true it has the same bms as everyone else it has the converter circuit with the inductor and the capacitors and typically it will regulate the current to 10 amps if it's excessive or if it's too excessive it will disconnect entirely so i'm not sure what he means by that next there's no circuit breaker and that is absolutely true but most batteries do not have circuit breakers and these circuit breakers are not for overcurrent protection they act as a switch they've recently gotten the dc rated one so that there's no issues and there's no failure of those circuit breakers but they're not necessarily a breaker for overcurrent protection because the bms will trip faster this is much faster than a thermal breaker any day. 
So yeah, the BMS, you'd have to have the BMS fail and then the breaker will be triggered. But if not, the breaker will never be triggered. Next, he says permanently assembled, so no possible field serviceability. So because these cell terminals are welded, just like the EG4, you cannot swap out cells. But a lot of these companies do not wanna do that, and if they have a warranty claim, they want you to ship the battery back and then give you a new battery. With SOK, they will swap the cells instead, and they prefer to do that you can take these batteries apart in minutes um, so if they prefer to do that as a business um, and you like to service your own batteries then by all means get an SOK next the warranty has some terms and also it's shorter than the other batteries these have 10-year warranties and this one only has seven also warranty is invalid if you don't connect the can communication cables that's not good next warranty is invalid if you open the case next warranty is invalid if the manufacturer determines that the battery is at the end of its usable life however they don't define what usable life actually is so i would read through that warranty it doesn't sound like a good time. Next, no USA-based support. The phone number is for China. But they respond instantly in WhatsApp. But of course, I'm Will Prouse. I review the batteries. Of course, they're going to respond quickly. But if you try to call them, they might not answer. I've never tested it out, but I would test out their service center before I would buy these. Next, no built-in monitoring to see state of charge. So you need to buy an external shunt. That's not necessarily true. If you're using it with the 18K, it will show you the state of charge. And it actually has the same lights as the EG4. And that's all I need. I just want to see relatively what state of charge they're at, if they're charging or discharging, and if they're on, and if there's no alarm state. So I think this is fine, and I prefer this. So I'd have to disagree with him on that point. So with Ruxu, you don't know what you're getting. You might get something good. You might have no problems. You might not have to do a warranty claim, but we have no idea yet if they will actually fulfill their promise. Now, Let's talk about my opinion. I think this is really nice. This might be my favorite server rack so far. It's simple, it works, and it looks good. Look at the SOK cables on the front here, and then also look at the server rack that EG4 is using. This one is superior. This looks so nice. Also, there's holes on the top to route the cables and the communication, and the bus bar is nicer than the EG4 bus bar. And there's no current sharing issues. I put my clamp meter on here, my Fluke, and every single one is always taking the same amount of current. It's incredible. And everybody else should copy this. This is fantastic. Also with the communication ports, it's just logically constructed and it makes it look good. And this server rack is on wheels and I've actually moved it around with five batteries inside without issue. It's really nice. It also has these little feet that you can pull out with a wrench. And I just love this design. It also has a door on the back. So you can check on the batteries in the back for whatever reason if you have to. But if you have the cables connected, you can cause a dead short. So that is a downside. But this is by far superior than any of these other rack solutions, especially the SOK. I really think they should spend some money and get some nice racks because personally, I like this enclosed rack. This is beautiful. Also, I like these quick connectors. It's a complete improvement over the AO lithium and they can handle the current. And it makes it so easy to take a battery in or out if you have to do a warranty claim. Now, something that I did not mention earlier is that we wouldn't have a dead short if I actually use the included cables. So you connect these to the other terminals on the batteries and then you route them straight out and then it's protected and there's no chance of causing a problem. But I like to have large conductors with massive T-class fuses with this system because we have 110 kilowatt hours and I don't want to have any current sharing issues. So I put oversized conductors, a nice two watt gauge cable directly to the bus bar and I can have all of that current flowing in and out quickly. I don't think I would use these unless you can do a diagonal connection and you use both cables because these are only four gauge. Um, and if you're pushing 
that 18K to the limit with only a single stack of this, you're gonna have to have larger conductors. If you have only one stack, you're gonna have to have two two watt gauge cables. So yeah, that's not gonna be accomplished by this. This is great if you have three of these stacks and you wanna connect them to a single 18K, but yeah, by no means would I use these for a single 18K in a single stack. So anyways, I like this. I think this battery is fantastic. It's the next level up than these other ones behind me. But we have no idea how well this company will run their business. So only time will tell. Um, I'm actually excited and I'm gonna use this for a long time. This is something I'm gonna keep. This is really nice stuff. I really wish we could swap out all of this because I hate this rack. Imagine if I had three of these racks. It would make my shop look so much cooler than all of these cables and all these wires all over the place. Like I can make this one look fantastic with the 18K and the color combination. This would look so good with the gray on the 18K. So yeah, I like this, this is great. So long story short, I do like it, but I don't know if I like the company. Only time will tell. If you have any issues with Ruxu, please share it on the forum or post your own videos. I would love to see videos of issues that you're having. If you're stuck on a warranty claim call with Signature Solar, post how long that call was on hold before you get to contact someone. If you get bad packaging, if you get um, dead on arrival units, share it with the world. It really helps these companies improve and that's what we need for these off-grid battery systems. And I hope that Ruxu does a good job because I want them to. I I want these types of racks and these types of batteries with these large bus bars. This is the direction we need to be heading. I really hope that these other companies get jealous of this and start supplying the same thing because I'm sure someone in China is selling this. And the price is fantastic, but it might come at a cost. So keep that in mind. These companies pay a lot for customer service and support. Who knows what they're doing over there in China for this. They might have good support, but I have no idea. Anyways, I'm rambling now, but I think it's pretty cool and we're hopefully gonna see more from this company in the future and hopefully it's gonna be good. So thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye.